For many patients and healthcare providers, religion is an essential part of their lives. For these individuals, religious beliefs and values shape how they think about health and disease, influence the things they do to stay healthy and combat illness, and inform their ethical values when faced with critical healthcare decisions. When healthcare systems do not know how a patient's religious identity impacts their healthcare decisions, they cannot provide culturally appropriate healthcare resources. To illustrate how religion may impact a patient's healthcare decisions, consider an encounter between a Muslim patient, Hakima, and her physician, Dr. Jones. Hakima's aunt was just admitted to the hospital with advanced breast cancer and is doing poorly. Shaken by her aunt's experience and concerned about her own risks, Hakima visits Dr. Jones to talk about cancer screening. She also wants to know how she might avoid unnecessary procedures at the end of life. Although Hakima wears a headscarf, because the patient information sheet does not ask about religious affiliation, Dr. Jones is uncertain about Hakima's religious identity. Furthermore, she hesitates to ask Hakima about her religion because of the current socio-political climate. During the visit, Dr. Jones tells Hakima that mammograms are used to detect breast cancer, discusses blood tests that can screen for cancer-related genetic mutations, and informs her about living wills. At the end of the visit, Dr. Jones gives Hakima generic brochures about mammography and blank living will templates. As she leaves the doctor's office, Hakima is startled to find that the mammography brochures have pictures of disrobed women standing in front of an x-ray machine and decides that maintaining modesty is more important than getting a mammogram. As she reflects on the conversation about genetics influencing disease, Hakima feels that since God controls whether one gets cancer, genetic tests will only cause her more anxiety. She next goes to consult her religious leader, Imam Abdullah, about the living will form. The Imam tells her that living wills are not Islamic. Consequently, Hakima decides not to fill out the forms given to her by Dr. Jones. In the end, Hakima's original concerns remain unresolved, and she feels conflicted about her decisions. Hakima's story exemplifies how a patient's religious identity can impact a variety of healthcare experiences and decisions, and highlights how physicians and religious leaders may not be equipped to help patients fully consider their options. Dr. Jones might have been able to allay Hakima's concerns about maintaining modesty if religious values had been discussed during the visit. Imam Abdullah could have discussed the Islamic responsibility to care for one's body and rulings about end-of-life care had he understood the clinical context behind Hakima's questions. The scant research on Muslim health and the few primers on Islamic bioethics leaves people like Hakima, Dr. Jones, and Imam Abdullah largely without the religiously sensitive healthcare resources they need. For example, a 2005 paper in BMC Medical Ethics found that for every seven papers published in the medical literature about Christianity or Christians, there were six papers related to Judaism or Jewish communities, but only one on Islam or Muslims. Clearly, Muslims and Islam are vastly underrepresented in the medical literature. A systematic literature review published 10 years later in the Journal of Health Disparities, Research and Practice still found few studies on American Muslims. The review also noted that 90% of studies on American Muslim health disparities fail to examine the role of Islam in Muslim health behaviors. There are many reasons behind the paucity of published research and the lack of resources at the intersection of Muslim health and the Islamic tradition. First, in order to conduct research on Muslim health and Islamic bioethics, a systematic approach that brings experts from many different disciplines together is required. For example, Islamic scholars must understand biomedical concepts, and health scientists need to understand aspects of Islamic law in order to conduct research and produce material that addresses the moral dimensions of biomedicine. Second, in order for research to have tangible impact, researchers must invest time and money into developing the community-based infrastructures needed to sustain health-related work. Third, most pre-existing survey questions that assess religious dimensions of health are based on Christian sensibilities. 
and therefore cannot accurately measure the relationship between religiosity and Muslim health. Consequently, researchers must commit themselves to the process of designing original survey tools based on Islamic worldviews. Finally, because there is no national institution dedicated to improving American Muslim health and to delivering Islamic bioethics education, there is no easy pathway for scaling up research projects and broadly disseminating educational programs. The IINDEM is a leading forum for research, education, and dialogue at the intersection of the Islamic tradition and contemporary biomedicine. Your participation, support, and prayers will enable us to improve Muslim health and serve the Islamic bioethics needs of Muslims around the globe. To learn more about IINDEM and how you can support us, please visit us online.